Now this is me. All the renders have been done. We've skipped them across, and imported them into Photoshop. Um, and as I said, you'll get a master beauty layer, which is this one here, which it will render out by default. And that is just basically the flat render you would see in Photoshop, uh, in Maya, if you just click the render button. If I turn that off, now I've just put in a basic background for now. This is just a number of, just a number of different layers, just so we've got something to put that back upon. And we have these main render passes here. So as you can see, we've got beauty, no reflect, ref, right, I'm not going to say that anymore, just, just can't say it. It's got no reflections in the eyes, you can see. And because the eyeballs had a bit of refraction on them, they've gone as well. Now, there's a couple of extra layers here I've added because I noticed after I'd rendered, we had this sort of shadow effect here. So all I've done is rendered the book out separately and created a mask. As you can see, that has just hidden that shadow there, which I didn't want. And the beauty of this is you don't have to re-render everything. You can just render sections and use a mask to overlay them. Like here, I uh, rendered out a separate layer with subsurface scattering on. Now, I would have liked to have covered that in this tutorial, but I just ran out of time. Um, and it's quite, it can get quite in depth. Um, but you can see the difference if I enable that. The skin is a lot softer, uh, more natural looking. Again, I've just used a mask. Um, if I disable that layer mask, this is all that was rendered. And just enabling that mask means we only get the skin. I just switch to this, you can see the mask on its own. And again, this was rendered out in Maya. I just set everything to black and only left, only made the body white, just rendered it out as a flat image and it created a great mask for us to use. So that's the skin. Now these are the other passes which it spat, which uh, Maya spat out, which we uh, we wanted. We've got scatter, which has just given us that scatter color. And you'll notice I've added a mask to these two. Um, as part of your render passes, you'll have also output a opacity map, hopefully. Um, and that's just given us this mask, which I've put in here. It just guarantees that these uh, render passes are only affecting the character and the book and the little shadow underneath and not going to end up affecting the background. So we have scatter there. Reflection, you can just, if I just zoom in on her head, as you can see there, we've just got those reflections and nothing else. Refraction, there we've got her eyeball, well, her iris, which had a slight refraction on it. Uh, and incandescence, which we put onto this uh, swirl around here. Now at the moment they're all black, so they don't really work. But what we can do is just select that layer, set it to screen, and you can see that scatter is just brightening that up a little bit. We move up to the next one with the reflections. Again, if it's mainly black, use screen, and that will just get rid of the black and overlay it for you. So there we can see those reflections. Continuing up, we'll do the same with the refraction. I can say them now. And that's just given us back the, the, uh, the iris. And again, incandescence, we'll set that to screen as well. Just zoom out a little bit. And that's just brightened up that swirl there. And obviously you can go in and you can adjust the color of each of these layers, adjust the hue, the saturation. Uh, and this is what I was saying before, you're completely open to do what you want with this as, and play around with it as much as you like. Just like with this skin layer which I added in, I just rendered it out separately and then brought it in as a separate layer. So if we turn that off for now, just because you probably won't have that layer in there. So it's, um, 
So let's move up to this section of lighting. Again, we outputted an occlusion map. And as you can see, that's just basic lighting information as if the light was cast from above the model. And that will just add a bit more depth. So for this, we could maybe add soft light like so. And you see, we get these nice shadows around where her fingers are on the book. And it just gives a bit more depth there. We can also adjust the opacity if we want to. We could also duplicate it and perhaps try and multiply just to darken down those dark areas a little bit more. What we could even do, say we wanted to adjust the skin on its own, we can go to our mask, our skin mask which we created, and you could create a mask for anything, all the, any other element, much the same way. In fact, down here I've created a selection mask. Now just like I did with the skin mask, I assigned a different colour to each object and then rendered out a flat image and then that just means it's a lot easier to uh, select things and adjust them. The only reason I rendered out a separate skin mask is when you start to get areas where the, uh, we have these transparencies here and it's going to be difficult to select this sort of area. So using the skin mask that helps to fix all that and just makes it easier to select as you put it in as a mask. So let's just copy that Close that down, go to our occlusion copy, click down here to create another mask, we'll just go to our channel, we'll paste that into there, and then if we turn that on and off, you can see because we've applied that mask, it's only going to be affecting the skin. Now, as you can see, adding this darker colour on top of here is just making it look dirty and grimy, which may be the look you're after, but we can also go in, adjust the hue saturation of this level uh, layer here, so if we turn on colorize, you can see it's already tinting her, her red, we can make that darker, lighter, saturate it a bit more, even change the color, so we could just go in change that shadow there to maybe a bit more of a red adjust the saturation down a little bit the darkness at uh, the lightness sorry like so just so we then get in a nice subtle shadow so again using that selection mask or rendering out your own masks will allow you to come in and just play around with all these as much as you like Moving on, we have a shadow layer. Again, this was, uh, if I just disable that layer mask for now, this was rendered out like this. I've just applied, added that layer mask just so we're not affecting anything on the background. And because this is a shadow layer, we use subtract. And that's sort of taking out that information. And again, it's maybe a bit too dark, so we can use the opacity to adjust this. And if we want the skin to have a different coloured shadow on it, we can just use as we did before. We could go in, apply that layer mask, and then add in our skin mask, duplicate it, and then we can adjust the skin separately. So you can just play around with anything you want over and over again, and just tweak everything all just because we took that extra step to render out the render layers which to be honest it wasn't a very difficult step to take really a few button presses and it's done so let's say you are you've got all your render passes in you've played around with them all and you're all ha very happy with what's going on uh, what else could we do to this scene well we could add some textures and overlay textures onto things like maybe this book cover here so if I just bring in a random 
leather texture. Now this is one I just, just quickly found online. I'm just going to copy that and I'm just going to paste it into here. Let's just make that a bit smaller. Like so, just so it covers that book. Like that. Maybe a bit smaller. So let's say that's roughly what you're after. Now the book is slanting backwards, so let's just not rotate, edit, transform, skew. And we'll just skew that so it's matching the book just slightly. Now I'm doing this quickly just to show you. But what we can do now is go into our mask and use our selection mask. What we could do is select color range, just select that blue there, turn down the fuzziness, like so. Select inverse, and then we can delete everything around the book. Turn off that selection mask. Now this is just a very quick example. And then we can use, maybe it multiply, as you can see. That's just quickly giving this book a bit of a leather, a leather feel to it. Obviously we could try overlay or soft light and just play around with that. Just to make the book a little bit more interesting. We could apply the same down here. And then obviously being in Photoshop, once we've done all that we can go in get our trusty Wacom tablet out and then just start painting in a bit more detail like adding in wear to the sides of the books uh, maybe add a bit of a glow on her jewellery uh, whatever you like really it's, uh, it's all entirely up to you now um, so I think that is pretty much everything covered You uh, we've just looked at rendering out, setting up your scene for rendering, rendering out uh, render layers, um, compositing them in Photoshop and adjusting them and using Mac masks to help um, and also very quickly just adding textures on top um, of the existing render just to add a bit more detail. Um, so I, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you've got any questions, I always say feel free to contact me. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, so I'm Anthony Ward. This has been a tutorial for 3D World magazine and I will see you on the next one.